I mod a lot of Game Boys on this channel. I also fix a lot of Game Boys on this channel. So naturally, I get a lot of comments asking how to fix this and how to fix that, or can you do it for me? The answer is no, I'm not gonna fix or mod your crap, but I'm more than happy to show you how to fix it. So today, we're gonna go over all the most common issues with the Game Boy Color and how to fix them. In my experience, a lot of the problems are mostly the same across most of the different models, especially since a lot of them share the same or very similar parts. But I still feel like they deserve their own videos, so we'll stick to the GBC for today. So subscribe so you can watch the other models videos in the future. I should also point out that this video will be divided up by different sections like power, screen, etc. So you can just go straight to the problem you're having or watch the whole video and learn a lot. And one last thing, I have a giant list of links to all the replacement parts and mod kits I use in the description down below. I now have links for people in North America and in Europe, and Code Jake will save you some money at a lot of those places. A lot of these sites will ship all over the world though, don't worry. All right, this is kind of a lame section if I'm being honest. To take care of bad screens like this or this, I usually will just put in a new modded screen. If you're already subscribed, that probably didn't shock you. But to me, it's the best and easiest way to take care of it. However, there is a way to fix this stuff. It's just incredibly tedious from what I've seen and heard. It requires removing the polarization film, cleaning up all that sticky goop, and applying a new polarizer. It's just a couple of steps, but to my knowledge, it is not a fast process. I will be attempting the old school Bivert mod for a video soon. That requires doing a lot of those same steps. So then I'll know just how annoying the process really is. But generally, I just recommend buying a mod kit or just getting a new old screen to swap. Now I'll actually show you how to fix some things. This one here has no life. Let's see if it's fixable. The first step I pretty much always do, something that I do to all of my Game Boys now, is clean the power switch. This thing gets nasty. If your Game Boy's not turning on, clean the power switch. It's probably dirty, and it'll probably help you turn your Game Boy on for the next 20-25 years. Might as well just clean it. I like to do that by sticking something, preferably my tweezers, underneath, and stick it out through the other side if I can, but right now we can't. Then put some flux down both sides, add a little bit of extra solder, but now we can put a little bit of pressure on the metal part going up while we heat up one side, wiggle it around if you need to. Eventually it should come up like this and then lift it up from the other side. And it's actually not too dirty in there, but it's still dirty. Now you can use a toothbrush or a paper towel or something to clean in there. Definitely use some IPA preferably 99% isopropyl alcohol. But for the power switches, I like to use my fiberglass pen. Now I'm at the end of my strand here, so it's gonna look a little bit different from what you would use. Squirt a little IPA there. We're just gonna go in here. This one's being a little extra stubborn, so I'm gonna get out the steel wool pen. I think it's steel wool. It looks like it to me. It definitely does the job but you can scratch things up if you use it too much, so go easy on it. Now this one's a little bit more tricky because you can actually break it pretty easily, but here's the actual power switch. This one actually isn't dirty, but for instruction purposes, I'm gonna clean it. For this, I highly recommend a fiberglass pen because it's gonna be the softest bristles, but just lightly going over it until the dirt goes away and it's nice and shiny and gold like this. That's all you need. Then we can put this back down and let's solder it back down. Going from one side, to the next, making sure everything is stuck down very nicely. Now you have a nice, solid, clean connection for your power switch. Let's see if it works. Beautiful. If you have any corroded or rusted battery contacts here, let's pop these out. There's a little tab in the back here that you just want to press down and then push the battery contacts out. It'll fall out like that, and you can either clean this one up or get a new one out. I'll clean that one up later, but for now, I'm gonna get a new one. Don't forget to clean that out, and then you can just put it back in its slot. Now we can fully assemble this. We're in business, baby. This one's a little different. This one has power issues because it's corroded on these battery contacts. It's also got some sound issues and some of the buttons don't work, but for now, let's focus on the power. It's really only the negative terminal, so I'm only gonna replace that one. I'm gonna put some flux down right here on this negative battery terminal. Then we're gonna press down into it and add some of our own new solder. Now this should be a nice glob of solder so we can easily maneuver it if we need to, which we're gonna need to. This part's a little tricky because it's hard to hold the tweezers, hold the board steady, and use the soldering iron, so be careful. What you wanna do is get your tweezers underneath the terminal you wanna take out, and you wanna keep that same grip as you flip it over. And once you get the solder flowing again, just wiggle it back and forth 
and try and pull away. That went really fast, so I'll explain it again. You're gonna wanna lift this half up while you're pushing this contact down and try to keep this side of the board in the same place. At the end of this video, I'll show you how to get rid of the corrosion, but for now, we're just going to replace it. Now I'm gonna clean up all the solder. There's two ways we can do that. My personal favorite way is the solder sucker. Make sure it's locked and loaded. Hold it right next to the solder you wanna get rid of. Heat it all up. Make sure it's nice and loose and Press the button, do that again, and press the button. Sucks that solder right on out of there. You can also use a solder wick to remove it. It's not my favorite, but a lot of other people like it. You just heat up both the braided wick and the solder at the same time. Just wiggle it around until all the solder is gone. Here's my fresh and new contact. We're gonna flip this over. And since we made that nice clean hole there, we're just gonna stick this in, and we're gonna flip it back over, and then we can add our solder back to it. I'm gonna put a little flux down and let's add our solder back. Perfect. I'm gonna clean up all that flux. That's what all that brown stuff is. Just some IPA, some toothbrushes and a paper towel. Flux is very sticky. If you're having trouble cleaning up the flux, I recommend just heating up the flux again with your soldering iron and it should make it easier to come off. But we're all clean. Now our battery terminals working perfectly. Now to get rid of the corrosion on these contacts, I like to dump them in a bowl of CLR. Just leave it in there until it's done bubbling. It won't look the prettiest, but they will still work. I've never had them not work after using CLR. And the last power issue that is common that I can think of is fuses. There are two fuses on the Game Boy Color. There are usually about two fuses on every Game Boy. F1 is right here and F2 is right here. If you're getting absolutely no signs of life, try testing the fuse. If there's continuity, it works. If there's not continuity, it's not working, swap it out. Just for an example, I will remove the F1 fuse, but it's fine, so I'm just gonna put it right back. Add some fresh solder to both sides. And with the tweezers, you're just gonna wanna push it off to the side very gently and switch off heating both sides until it's off. It might stick to your soldering iron, that's fine. And I'm pretty sure the orientation doesn't matter on a fuse, but I'm still gonna make sure that the writing is facing the same direction as I took it out. And just solder it down one side at a time until it's all connected and nice and flat. And clean up all that flux. If your Game Boy looks like this when you turn it on and try and read a game, your cart slot might be dirty. Here's a few things you can do. Turn it off, do that action. Still not working, all right. I like to use the Clean Boy. If you don't have one, if you don't wanna buy one, even though they're really cheap and really nice, and you can use code Jake to save 5% at retromodeling.com. You can do this with a regular cartridge and it'll work okay, but you could scratch the cartridge that you're cleaning your cart slot with. So getting the Clean Boy out, we're just gonna put it in, take it out, put it in, take it out. It'll take all that dirt off onto this thing. I don't know what it is. And if you want a little extra help, you can slide some IPA in there. And instead of blowing into the cart slot or your cartridge like days past, get some canned air. We're still having issues. I recommend taking your Game Boy apart, spraying some IPA directly in there and going to town with your toothbrush. And after a lot of trying and cleaning, we got it. Usually it's not this tough. I cut a lot of that out. <laughs> This Game Boy is having problems with A and B, so let's go investigate. Not so much on A, but you can see right here on B on this far side, there's something that shouldn't be there. There are a few ways we can take care of this. IPA, spraying it down, toothbrush. And then I like to go over it with the paper towel, and it's better, but it's still there. The next thing I would do is fiberglass pen. Again, mine looks a little bit weird because I'm at the end of it, and I removed the metal tip. We can just go over it, on the area that is having some dirt issues. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do it to all my buttons real quick. That is pretty much perfect. Then after that, I still recommend going over it again with IPA. And the last thing I recommend doing is either swapping out the membranes, these lovely guys right here, because as you can see, they get kind of dirty, but you can do this. Take your paper towel, take some IPA, spray a bunch on there. And these little black dots are what make the connection to press the actual button. So you could take this and wipe the black directly on the paper towel. Do it to both of them and dry it off. 
What that does is kind of just reset the membranes. The easiest way I can describe it. It works wonders for me. You can do it to all the membranes. Also, you might want to just clean off the dirt. A little toothbrush, IPA, you know the drill. That's pretty much all I can tell you for the buttons. Start, select, A, B, right, left, down, and up are all working perfectly. This Game Boy is having some sound issues. We're gonna go over pretty much everything you can do to figure out where the sound issue is coming from. I like to start with the volume wheel. You probably guessed it, let's clean it. IPA, little toothbrush action. Try and get in there, in between the PCB and the little circle. Get some canned air. I like to spin the wheel while I'm spraying air through there. Try and knock as much dirt out as you possibly can. If you're still having problems, reflow the solder. Just like every other time you reflow something, I recommend flux and some fresh solder. Just be careful not to bridge anything and clean up the flux. If you still have those same issues, you can buy aftermarket volume wheels. This one's pretty clean and works fine, so I'm not gonna swap it out. The next thing I would check if you have no sound or having issues with your sound, maybe it's quiet, check your speaker. If your speaker's falling apart, obviously you should probably swap it out, but let's do that real quick. Heat those bad boys up and remove them. I didn't get the best shot of that, but it comes out pretty easily. Then I like the solder sucker, so I'm gonna heat this up and suck and suck. Now, here's our new speaker. You might have to cut this tab off, strip it. The positive and negative aren't gonna matter for this. At least as far as I know, there's no positive and negative difference on the Game Boys. Then I like to fold the wire over once you've stuck it through the hole. And just like that, you can add some solder to both sides and you've got a brand new speaker. Now, while we're in here, honestly, I just recommend doing this. This middle piece right here is your headphone jack. I recommend reflowing the solder here by putting a bunch of flux on these five little pins. A lot of the time, the headphone jack can be the problem. Sometimes you just need to reflow it. Sometimes you need to replace it or clean it out. It can get corroded in there. But we're gonna just reflow all the solder. And if you want to, you can do it to the power jack. And once again, clean up all that flux. And for funsies, let's just put some IPA and our toothbrush all around this headphone jack. This one does have sound issues, but I don't think it's the capacitor. But since I don't have any examples, we'll try it anyways. I recommend flux on both sides. I recommend adding solder on both sides. Get a good grip with some tweezers. Switching off both sides, heating it up. Carefully try and pull it out of there. And hopefully you can eventually get underneath there to heat up both sides and lift it out. When you buy from MyLink, it'll come with all three of the capacitors you need. You don't have to replace them all if you don't want to. Only this one's for sound. But if you're replacing one of them and you have all new ones, you might as well replace them all. Each of these has their own size and they're all labeled so you can't mix them up. And the shape of the base is even shown on the board so you don't mix it up. I recommend cleaning up the old flux and putting some new flux down. Heat up one side as you press it down. Heat up the other side as you press it down. And then keep going back and forth till you feel like it's secure and it's nice and flat. We're good. If something wasn't included in this video, I probably just don't think it was that common of an issue, or I just don't know about it. But if you're having any other problems, please leave them in the comments down below. I also strongly recommend joining my Discord so me or another community member can help you out. Everyone go thank Rux for the amazing server in the comments for me. And as always, you can just buy a Game Boy for me pre-modded if your repairing endeavors don't work out. Well, that's it for me, so like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later, guys. If something wasn't included in this video, I probably just don't think it was that common of an issue, or I just don't know about it, or maybe I don't even know how to fix it. <laughs>